Welcome back guys. In this video, we're going to be looking at those inference configurations that I have mentioned already, such as the temperature, top K and top P. Keep in mind, I'm in the Oregon region because that's where all the available models are. So here I'm in the playgrounds and chat and I selected the Anthropic um, Cloud V2 model. And here you can um, update the inference configurations. Okay, so let's take a look at them. So we have, um, let's um, go through them, okay? So we have, for example, temperature. And foundation models typically support um, the following parameters, such as temperature, top P, and top K. However, some don't have top K. We're gonna look at A21 Labs models, which actually don't um, support the top K parameter, okay? But let's get into it. And if you actually um, click on this info button and you close this, um, you can actually read about it yourself. Here, Amazon gives you a quick um, guide but I will try to explain it in my words, okay? So these three parameters um, basically control the randomness and diversity of the models, okay? So let's look at temperature. Large language models use probability to construct the words in a sequence. For any given sequence, there is a probability distribution of options for the next word in the sequence, okay? So when you set the temperature close to zero, the model tends to select the higher probability words. When you set the temperature further away from zero, the model may select a lower probability word. So in technical terms, the temperature modulates the probability density function for the next tokens, implementing the temperature sampling technique. This parameter can deepen or flatten the density function curve. And here's the key caveat. A lower value results in a steeper curve with more deterministic responses, and a higher value results in a flatter curve with more random responses. So if you set this value to be low, like zero, then and, and you call the model with the same input, it's going to be more deterministic. So what does that mean? So let's say I ask who the best um, soccer player is in the world, and if I set the temperature to one, then the values, um, anytime I call the model, it might change. And once it might say Cristiano Ronaldo, once it might say Lionel Messi, once it might say Maradona or Pele, you get the gist of it. If I set it to zero, it's going to be deterministic, meaning that it's usually going to output the same result over and over again. So if you ask who the best soccer player is, it's simply going to give you Cristiano Ronaldo, no matter how many times you call it. Now, obviously that's a joke because that's my personal uh, preference, but you get the gist of it. So if you set temperature to a low value, it's going to return the same answer over and over again, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's look at top K. Um, top K, um, so temperature defines the probability distribution of potential words, and top K defines the cutoff where the model no longer selects the words. For example, if we set top K to 50, so if I set it to 50, the model selects from 50 of the most probable words that could be next in a given sequence. So when you lower the top K value, it reduces the probability that an unusual word gets selected next in a sequence. So in technical terms, top K is the number of highest probability vocabulary tokens to keep for top K filtering, okay? And now there are a lot of articles about, you know, these parameters, so I'm, I'm doing my best to explain it to you guys, but if you wanna, you know, deep dive behind the mathematics of it, uh, you know, there's a lot of great articles um, that you can look at. Now let's look at top P. So top P defines a cutoff based on the sum of probabilities of the potential choices. So if you set top P below one, the model considers the most probable options and ignores less probable ones. So top P is similar, similar to top K, but instead of capping the number of choices, it caps choices based on the sum of their prob probabilities. So based on how likely they would occur. So let's look at an example. For example, the prompt, I hear the hoof beats of, and you might want the model to provide horses, zebras, or unicorns as the next word, right? And if you set the temperature to its maximum, without capping top K or top P, you increase the probability of getting unusual results, such as unicorns, because you know, um, you don't hear the hoofbeats of unicorns because they don't exist. Now, if you set the temperature to be zero, you increase the probability of horses. So 
If you set high temperatures and reduce the values of top K or top P, you increase the probability of horses or zebras and decrease the probability of unicorns. So basically top P and top K um, go hand in hand, okay? Now let's look at the maximum length, okay? So we can click on it and the maximum length is the number of tokens to generate responses. So sorry, the maximum number of tokens to generate. So responses are not guaranteed to fill up the maximum desired length. So this is especially comes in handy if you want to, you know, look at this from a pricing perspective and you want the output to be a maximum of 100 tokens, right? Because you don't want the model to output you an output with like 3000 tokens because that's going to cost you a lot more than if you set the maximum um, length to be 100. And now we can also look at the um, uh, stop sequences basically and you can configure up to four sequences that the model recognizes and after a stop sequence the model stops generating further tokens and the return text doesn't contain in the uh, stop sequence okay so you can just basically give it words that when it sees it it will stop generating um, further tokens now let's see what else we have as you can see for this model we do not have more configurations and I encourage you to, you know, play around with these models and ask it the same question and it's going to be very um, awesome how the responses vary. Okay, so now um, let's look at, you know, if I want to look at A21, let, actually let's look at some text, okay, because this was for chat. Now let's look at the text playground and let's look at, for example, Cohere, okay, and we can look at their model. And here, as you can see, um, we have the uh, same um, outputs, except we have this return likelihoods, which is generation all or none. And the cohere command model supports the return likelihoods, and it basically specifies how and if the token likelihoods are returned with the response. You can specify the following options. The default option is none. So if you say generation, then it will only return likelihoods for generated tokens. If you say all, then it will return likelihoods for all tokens. And if none, it does not return any uh, likelihoods. OK, so that's um, one thing you want to look at. But you technically don't want to return likelihoods because that just basically helps you explain why the model chose the uh, the next word. And here you can have streaming enabled up top and you can specify true to return the response piece by piece in real time and false to return the complete response after the process finishes. OK, so that's just something cool you can play around with. If you've you know chatted with ChatGPT, the streaming is enabled because you see that the responses are pieced together in real time. But if you switch this off, then you'll just get the output uh, at once. OK, so these are the I could look at, you know, more models. I could look at, um, you know, other Amazon models or other uh, A21 Labs models. But the the commands are going to be actually quite uh, similar. If I want to look at an Amazon model, as you can see, I have no model here right now because they're all in preview. Um, but the parameters are basically the same. Now, there is one more that I want to look at, and that is for image generation, where you can select the stability AI only right now. And here you can also get the uh, information, um, but I will, you know, try to um, describe it as much as I can. So the prompt strength is going to be equal to. So let's look at the API request. So the prompt strength is actually going to be equal to this config sale. OK, config scale the seed is going to be equal to the seed and the steps is going to be equal to the uh, generation step. OK, now let's talk about them. So the prompt strength basically, uh, like it says, determines how much the final image portrays the prompt. Use a lower number to increase randomness in the generation. Now the steps it basically determines how many times the image is sampled. More steps can result in a more accurate result. And here we also have a seed, which is pretty awesome, I think. Um, it basically determines the initial noise setting. So if you use the same seed and the same settings as the previous run, so sorry. So if you use the same seed and the same settings as a previous run to allow inference to create a similar image. 
if you don't set this value, this is set as a random number. So basically, if you worked with like Jupyter Notebooks or things like that, you can set the seed and that way um, it's going to uh, remember the randomness. So, you know, it's going to produce um, similar images. OK, so if I say let's look at it this way. OK, I'm going to this is fun. This is more fun than the text ones, I think. So if I say that um, soccer, soccer players um, kicking the ball and I'm going to set the prom strength to be um, 30. And let's see, we can look at the API request. As you can see here, we have the text, the scale, the seed and things like that. And you have the soccer players kicking the ball. Now, if I set the prompt strength to zero, let's see how this would change. So I'm going to run it. And as you can see, this is total randomness. So you can play around with this. I don't even know what this is. So that's why you want to, it determines the prompt strength, how much it should, the prompt affect the final output. Okay, so feel free to play around with this. Um, remember, this is very cheap. If we look at the pricing for Stability AI, um, it's basically um, this per image. And this is the premium quality. It's a little more expensive, but as you can see, it's still very cheap. And the premium quality is um, if you have the generation step above 50, right? Um, as you can see, it's how many times the image is sampled and more, more uh, steps may be more accurate. However, it does, uh, you know, it costs a little more. So I feel like we've covered all the um, parameters that you can set and I hope you understand them. So before we start building and coding our ac actual uh, application, um, we're going to look at um, the custom models and how you can create models with your own data. So I will see you in the next video.